In the previous video, I showed you how to install a Windows 11 in KVM from the command line, but ran into a small issue. When I ran the install command, I set the number of cores to four, but when I checked Task Manager, it only listed two. I tried changing the number of cores manually and from the XML configuration file without adding anything, and it saved it two cores. What the heck's going on? I ran, I can run it on two cores, but I really, really, really want more power. This is B from Tay Talk Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to change the number of cores on Windows 11 KVM virtual machines. So stick with me. I've got a favorite ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it, give it a dislike if you didn't like it. Make sure you let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comments below. And lastly, make sure you stick around all the way to the end so you catch the examples. Let's go ahead and dig in. All right, I'm going to shrink my face here. So let's start off by doing a sudo versh dom info. Then we're going to do win tech 11. Uh, dom, versh dom info gives you information on the virtual machine. And we can see here that we've got four CPU cores. So let's also do this. Do sudo versh edit win tech 11. It's going to take us to the XML configuration file. We can see vCPUs four. And then there's actually another place that you can check here. Um, we can see that CPU and it doesn't have anything else set for CPU. All right. So I honestly have no idea why exactly this is happening. So I tried to kind of, you know, play around, mess around and see what I could get. So let me go ahead and let me see. Let me go. Actually, I got to go back over here. We're going to come out of here. We're going to do sudo versh uh, start. And we do win tech 11. And we're going to come over here. We're going to bring it up. Okay, give it just a second here to go ahead and finish booting. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen, just to make it a bit easier on you. Oops. Scale that just so we have everything on screen. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up the task manager. We'll go over here to performance and virtual processors is only listed as two. And we can see here we've got the logical processes showing and we can only, we can see that there is only two. So I found something interesting though as I was going through this. Let's go, let's go to device manager. And let's go down to processors. Here we go. And we can see that there's four. So on some level, it recognizes there's four, but it also doesn't recognize all four. So there's a disconnect somewhere. And again, I'm just really not sure why it's doing that. I even tried running a uh, CPU Z. And CPU Z is a great uh, Windows application that will allow you to just get like, you know, information on your CPU system and, and stuff like that. And, 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 you know, a lot of times CPU Z does a really good job of kind of catching things that are maybe a little different than you think that they are. Um, you know, like if you watch some of like, you know, the tech videos out there, you'll see them, you know, doing reviews on these cheap Chinese, you know, motherboards or processors or something like that. And a lot of times they use this tool to be able to go ahead and kind of see, oh, okay, yeah, this is what they did here. And and we can see here we have, um, from the selection, we have two sockets. And this first socket has one core, one thread. Socket two has one core, one thread. So clearly it's only seeing the, it's only seeing the two core. So again, I'm not really sure what's going on, but the good news is, is that we can fix it. You know, and as I stated in my previous video, Windows, VM installs are just a little funky compared to Linux. So uh, just keep that in mind. You're always going to, you know, when you're cross, when you're doing virtual machines on different platforms, uh, you know, different operating systems, it can, it can just be a little goofy. So uh, let's go ahead and get into actually making the fixes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and close all this out. I'm gonna shut it down. All right, and all right, so we've got that shut down. So let's go ahead and go over here. We're gonna do, gonna do a, I should get you a clear. Before we actually start getting into this, we're gonna start by going over how to fix it at install. So this is gonna be, the command I'm gonna put in here is actually gonna be very similar to the one we 
ran last time. The big difference here is, is that where the VM's name is Windows 11 test and the, the drive name is also different. But you can notice here under vCPU, we've got set set to four. And then you see this other stuff after that, you're like, you know, you may not have noticed that before because it wasn't there. Now, what we're doing here is we're actually setting some additional parameters to be able to go ahead and um, kind of tailor the machine how we like it. And we're setting the vCPU cores to four, but we're specifying that we have sockets equals one, cores equals two, and threads equals two. Now, when you're inputting this into the commands, you don't want to use any spaces between the comma and the next word. It's just all going to be one continuous succession of information. So you'll just do tag tag v CPU and the number of the number of cores, sockets one, um, cores two, and then threads two. Now, keep in mind, if you say if you're running, say if you're running more than four, say if you were running eight, you would do you would do in that instance, you would set the number of cores to four and then threads to because because threads is always going to double your cores. That's um, how hyper threading um, or multi threading works, depending on if you're talking about AMD or um, Intel. So let's go ahead and run the command here. We're not actually going to go through with the install. We did that in the previous video, and we can also show this other other ways. All right, so let's go ahead and do sudo first, edit, and we win 11 test. And if you look down here, you can actually see V uh, CPU placement static, and then we got four right here. And if we scroll down to that section on CPU, we can see we've got some additional information here. This uh, this is um, this is uh, this will kind of differ depending on what um, you know. Um, depending on if you've how if you were doing this before or after the install, but this is what it looks like after the install, and then it also adds in this model fallback for bid. Don't worry about that. Um, that's that's you don't need to add that one because we're actually I'm actually going to show you how to manually update this here in just a minute. Uh, you won't have to add that, and, um, and you'll see more here in just a second. But you also see this down here for the topology, where we've specified the sockets. Um, matches our one, cores matches our two, threads matches our two, but you also see this one that's dies. You can't set the dies for that um, for the vert install command. So just make sure that when you're setting that those parameters, you're only doing sockets, cores, and threads. So pretty cool. Actually, let's just we don't need to save that. All right, so let's go ahead and clear this out. And now what we're going to do is going to do sudo versh. Edit when tac tac eleven tac eleven. Now we're gonna go ahead and leave this one right here at at four because that's where we want to be. But we're gonna go down here to that CPU section, and we can see here ours differs from that previous one. Whoops, did I go down too far? I think it did. There we go. Ours differs here. This first line, um, it it it's gonna vary just depending on what the settings are when you first do the install again, but it's okay that it's it's a little bit different like this. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go up here and we're going to create a new line below that. We're gonna actually input some parameters here. All right, I'm just gonna copy and paste these. Gotta make a couple of adjustments here before we go ahead and accept it. All right, so previously, before making those changes, we had this right here. And if you notice here, it's got this forward slash. Now, with the forward slash, we that's, that basically says, hey, this is the end of the HTML data for this line or for this variable or, or whatever. Um, so we got to go ahead and get rid of that on this one because if you notice down there at the bottom below topology, we can see the forward slash and then CPU. So we're going to actually end it down there because we want to start it up here with CPU, but we also want it to, want it to take into account the topology. So we have to make sure we remove this. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get rid of that. And what we'll do is we'll come up here and we'll do, go ahead and save it. Oops. Um, oh, oops, made a mistake here. See, it, it, you, you know, if you try to set if you try to set this this information down here to more than the information up here, you're going to get this error. Unsupported CPU topology doesn't match maximum vCPU count. So what you'll do is you'll go back in there 
and you'll have to go ahead and go here. I forgot that I um, I was doing some testing with this with this previously. So let's change that to two. Just make sure two times two equals four. Because remember, we're talking about the cores versus threads is your threads are, you know, if you want to go ahead and actually use hyper threading, you're going to go ahead and do two cores and two threads. So that's going to give us the four total. And that's the way that that's the way that Windows is um, that we have to set it up for Windows. So let's go ahead and save all of this. And we see we don't get the error this time. We're going to sudo versh start. And win. 11. Let's go over here. Whoops. Oh, you know what? Uh, hold on here. Got to go ahead and, and let's, let's go ahead and get out of here. Forgot that I still had that one started. So why is this not going up? There we go. Go back over here. We're gonna do a sudo verse destroy. We're gonna win past. There we go. Oops, had that backwards. Windows eleven test sudo verse destroy win eleven. All right, so now we got to go back and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start it up again. Sudo first start win 11 is the way that uh, when using when using VNC, what's going to happen is, is the first virtual machine that you're going to set you're going to start is going to get the default port of 5900. Every successive uh, machine that you start after that will start at 5901, 5902, 5903 and so on. So we I wanted to go ahead and just go back to 5900 because that's the only SSH connection that I had that'll allow me to do this. I'm not going to get into that. Go back to seeing my interacting with your I think it was your my inter, I think it was my interacting with your VMs video. If not, then there's probably there should be another one out there somewhere. If there's not, then let me know down in the comments and I can always go back and make that video. So let's go ahead and go in here. Let it come up and then we're going to go ahead and bring up task manager, go to performance and boom. Virtual processors is equal to four. We've got four right here. So that is exactly where we want to be. Awesome. So, yeah, so that that shows you how to fix the issue right there. Um, make sure you check out the other videos in my Linux virtualization series. And if you haven't. Uh, done so already make sure you check out the video where we actually install v uh, windows 11 in a vm in the previous video thank you so much for watching my video and have the greatest of days